And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, Breaking the Fourth Wall, episode 49. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams, my co-host, Junior Ruiz. And uh, let's get right into it there, Junior. Uh, some, some interesting news, I mean, some things we already know about. We all know that Batman's dead now, as of issue 40 of Batman. Actually, I just, yeah. Or did I just... I, no, no, no. I, I mean, I knew for a few days, but it, it was like one of those things that was just like, eh. You knew, but you didn't really care? Yeah, I haven't been following it, you know. Well, you know, it's... The, the comic how, how books dead kind is of like somebody... A, de- it's like, that means nothing. Yeah, death nothing. doesn't mean shit in comics. It doesn't. It, it, yeah. I mean, we could do an episode just talking about every single person, and it would probably be three parts yeah. that's died and returned. It's just... If your uncle Uncle Ben's the only one that stays dead, yeah, that's it. But uh, so we and we also know, thanks to the internet spoiling it, that uh, Jim Gordon is the new Batman, yeah, and he's in a robotic suit. What we didn't know, but now know, thanks to Divergence that came out on Free Comic Book Day, is it's almost RoboCop esque, whereas the, the the whole idea of Batman is now being run by the GCPD. And Batman has GCPD logo on him. Like, seriously, I don't know if you saw no, it. Yeah, like, I, versions, I've seen it. I just think, I'm like shaking my head because I think it's a crock. Nope. You're, you're shaking your head, but people can't hear it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get bigger earrings. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe, maybe a cowbell. No, I just... <laughs> um, it's a, You know, how long is it going to last? I mean, with, with, like you said, with Convergence going on and all this stuff... What's the end result going to be? Is it going to be something similar to Marvel Secret Wars, where you know they just kind of keep this and that? It's a way to bring back old stuff. For all we know, it's just you know, hey, you know, at the end of Convergence, Batman didn't die or whatever. You know, well, some. I just have a feeling it's going to be one of those. Well, things. that's the thing, though. This is this is post Convergence Batman. Okay. So this is going to take place after Convergence is done. Hmm. Which, right now, Convergence, I'm not... It's it's hard to say what is and what is, isn't with Convergence now that we're like four issues, I think four or five issues into Convergence. The story's been kind of, meh. The tie-ins, like I said last week, the ones that I thought were going to be good really sucked. The ones that I thought would suck have been good. Uh, I, Batman and Robin 2 just came out last week. Still ultra disappointed that the editorial staff at DC failed to realize that if you're going to use Batman and Robin versus Red Hood and his, I can't remember what his sidekick was during Morrison's Batman and Robin run, that that was Dick Grayson Hmm. and not Bruce Wayne. And it's totally, it's not explained why it's him. It's there's, he's got Dick Grayson's costume on. It's just an editorial fuck up. But uh, I'm not sure I'm too excited about this new Younger looking Mohawk sporting Jim Gordon as Batman. I haven't seen the image. That's kind of scary. Yeah, well, he's got like it's in Divergence when he's they're talking about him becoming Batman. Are you ready to become Batman? He's just like, whatever. And they they mentioned his haircut, and he was like, oh, you know, I'm a Marine, it's short and cropped. Mm -hmm. And someone's like, yeah, next time you need to let someone else cut your hair. Hmm. So they basically make a joke out of the Mohawk. And, uh, you know, he suits up and he's like, well, all right, let's, where's my Batmobile? Time to have some fun. And that's pretty much all they give you. Right. Um, it was actually a pretty decent issue, the Divergence issue. They tied into the upcoming uh, Dark Side War. Okay. Which uh, Justice League 40 started uh, in Divergence, the free issue. It revealed that there was another Amazon born on the Mascara. At the same time as Diana, and she was actually the daughter of Darkseid. Really? Who mm. is working with the Anti Monitor, I suppose, according to what I believe that was her that struck down Metatron in the end of Justice League 40. But I mean, it looks interesting. Um, I'll just roll into my, my next thing I was going to say that this is kind of where you get the reveal that everything is in continuity. You know, it's, it's, that's why I like reading my Turtles and my Transformers and my Ghostbusters and my Afterlife with Archie and my Saga, because 
you don't have to worry about all this convoluted storyline with this character crossing into that character's book and is, is this character this and that character it's like like you're sitting there explaining this stuff to me and I'm getting a headache I'm like zoning out <laughs> it, you know it's it like, does get rather hard to keep track of everything it does and it's and then like what happens in two months when they're like oh you know well this storyline sucked let's go ahead and change it and now like case in point um I don't I don't know if you had this on your list but uh the true origins have been revealed of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. I actually so, did not have that. But okay. But I, it's, I it's just one of those about. things, you know, like, well, it's convoluted. Like, okay, it's not this. It's this now. And so they decide, you know what? No, it's not that. It's going to be this. You know, it's just like, Well, I, I truly believe, just speaking on the, the Quicksilver Scarlet Witch thing, that that is steeped in Marvel's trying to get them away from mutants... And make them not mutants since Fox owns mutants. Yeah. Or film rights to mutants. So they can still use them going forward. Right. I, I truly believe shot. that I truly believe that's what's going on with Secret Wars. I don't feel like, you know, I, I picked up this prologue of Secret War that it it handpicks issues dude from like the last thirty years of comics, starting with the the last two issues of the original Secret War. All the way going into some Miles Morales Spider Man. Okay, I didn't bother reading it because it just looked like a fucking headache. Um, it's two hundred and forty pages of headache. Wow. So I don't know who would really want to deal with that kind of a headache, but they're trying to say that the seeds for this this has been, it goes all the way back to the eighties, which is kind of ridiculous. I mean, face it, Marvel's pulling what DC did with the new Fifty Two. They have a successful movie franchise. Let's do this big event. Well, we're going to revisit all of our old great storylines, and we're going to kill off the 616, and we're going to kill off the Ultimate U, and we're going to handpick the best elements from everything and put it in a new universe that's going to more closely re- be relatable to the cinematic universe so that it's easier to get crossover fans. And I believe I said that on an earlier podcast of ours. Yeah, more than once, ago. actually. I mean, I have believed that so- from. For forever, I've been wait, just wait. It's going to happen because you can see it. It's slowly, they've slowly been doing it. Slowly been doing it. But um, I miss the '90s, and you know that's not something you hear a lot. You know, in, in terms of comic book stories, and that's really funny that you say that because I feel like the more stuff that comes out lately, the more '90s. Like I feel like it's it's not like, at all. Like I meant it the opposite way because the '90s when they did quote unquote convoluted storylines. It still was streamlined. It made sense. Like the biggest um, thing that they had did, that I guess was uh, the onslaught stuff, where that impacted everything, even the smaller books like Punisher at the time, you know. But and then Ghost Rider. So you really don't feel like uh, the the Scarlet Spider stuff was convoluted. The Clone Saga. I loved all of that, and to this day, I still stand behind the Clone Saga. Yeah, yeah, I it's, thought it was great. I I was not a fan of the Clone Saga. I just, just like that. I think that's great. It was too convoluted for me. Um, you know, it's I appreciate it reading Justice League forty and seeing that they pretty much go back to Christ on the Earth. It's like, yeah, this happened, and Zero Hour happened, and you know all these different crises that, 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 that yeah, this has all happened, and no one remembers it, and times effed up. And the universe hasn't really settled and it's still shifting. And obviously DC is seeing failing sales because the mythical new reader doesn't exist. And the readers they were able to bring back in were lapsed, but at the cost of faithful readers. Well, that's why, you know, I, this that's is why exactly you say you all your indie stuff. Yeah, that's but... That's not heavily continuity-based. This is, this is also why... I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love knowing what came before, all the small details of the of what involves continuity. But when it's it's bogged down and you just you do this to fix that, but it's going to fix this and it's going to change that, and you do it every year, it becomes too much. But I honestly think this is why these new readers don't exist. Because if you know, new reader number one walks into the store, and you're the clerk, and he's like, "All right, what's going on? How do I?" How do I jump on board? And you just give the, you give them the explanation that you just gave me. They're gonna turn around and walk right the hell back out. Yeah, no, seriously. Well, that was like, one. How the, do you expect somebody to jump into that? That was one of the biggest problems with the new Fifty Two. Is if they were gonna do 
a complete relaunch of the line, it shouldn't have been a soft relaunch. Right. It should have been a total relaunch for all titles. Because Batman became the most convoluted book that there was. Yeah. Because you had this... Batman's been around for 10 years, and he's got X amount of sidekicks that couldn't have possibly existed, and now you've diminished all their characters. Mm-hmm. And, and then Green Lantern. Green Lantern pretty much went on as though New 52 really didn't happen. Yet, it clearly changed. Like you said, you're, you're nitpicking things out and you're screwing stuff up. Yeah. You're, in, in your attempt to fix things, you're fucking up other things and you're not paying attention to it as a whole. So Green Lantern kind of not suffered because attention. of that. Because like the, the Blackest Night storyline could not have happened the way it played out because so much they said didn't happen. Right. In the New 52. But now everything's in continuity. So we'll see. I'm really curious to see what post divergence is going to look like for DC. It looks like they have some good titles coming out. Uh, I was looking forward to the Dark Universe title, which was pretty much going to be the relaunch of Justice League Dark. But apparently the writing, the uh, the team on that book has left the book before it even came out. Really? Um, they've decided to... They're actually on John Constantine Hellblazer. And they've decided to just stick with John Constantine and leave the Dark Universe book. And they're folding their ideas for Dark Universe into Constantine's book. So and, wouldn't that make Constantine's book too convoluted? Yeah. Well, it's it's all so convoluted anyway. I mean, Constantine's co- character's been convoluted over the last months anyway. Because he's been on Earth 2. Right. And then back. And it's just, it's real... It's so confusing, and so many of the characters are unrecognizable. And speaking of more DC unrecognizable characters, Clark Kent has been outed as Superman and has become a douchebag that can no longer fly. Well, like, all right then. what in the fuck are they doing with this character? Like, if they are, you know, if you want to talk flagship characters, right? Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. You've got one character now that's dead. Those are the three you can't really mess with. One character shouldn't. who's... or I mean, granted, I feel like the new 52 has done a lot to help Wonder Woman succeed as a character. Mm-hmm. I feel like the new 52 version of Wonder Woman is pr- probably the best Wonder Woman I've ever read in my life. And that's not saying a lot. Right. Now, Batman, they've pretty much ruined him for me. Like, I am a fan of Scott Snyder, but this current Batman run, I'm not a fan of. Like, I go back and look at his the great work he did on Detective, and it's like, what is DC Editorial doing to this guy to where they're limiting what he can do with stuff? It's Because it's got to be what it is. Specifically, I think, with that character. So, yeah, specifically with him. And then Superman is just a, a hot mess, man. Pre-New 52, Superman was a solid book. I don't care what anybody says. Action Comics was great, dude. There was some really good stuff coming out of the Superman end of the universe, you know? That Brainiac storyline was solid. The Legion of Superheroes storyline was solid. The Last Son of Krypton. Uh, even even New Krypton was okay. But this is just crap. And it's been, th- what, a little over three years now? Are we going into the fourth year of, of New 52? Yeah. Coming in September, which was no longer be New 52. And they still don't know what the hell to do with Superman. So now he's back to the blue jeans wearing... With a, a almost like a Superboy looking shirt, it's still got the blue, but they've dropped the yellow. It's got black, and it's just he looks horrible. He's completely unrecognizable. They have friggin' ruined Superman. Do you think that's something that's like because Superman as a character has been over the years made to be like this such a powerful character that it kind of no pun intended alienates him, you know, in terms of what writers can actually do. Because this guy's supposed to be like this huge, you know. I I could I could see where him being like a super powerhouse would limit like your storytelling capabilities, but why not? Like I, I seriously sat around last night and thought about Superman, and I thought I'm sure if, he sits around and thinks about. Yeah, I'm sure he does because I'm worth thinking about, baby. If, <laughs> if if I had the chance to write Superman, I would probably do things with Superman people haven't seen. Just have him smoking a bowl. Let's, yeah, the, totally. Jay and Silent Bob, he's going to get high. He's going to think about the world's problems. You know, I, and, and I think it really came to me because I was watching that show Vice on HBO. Okay. Which is like a news show. And they were talking about, like, all the 
the genetically modified plants and stuff and how like pretty much like they expect sometime within the future that all our crops will be screwed because we've genetically modified them and we're growing all the same stuff all over the world and that's just bad for uh, uh, our agriculture. I forgot the word for a second there. And then they were talking about the water shortage in India and like how they build toilets to these people in India but the people won't use it. Like seriously, they showed video footage of people squatting next to train tracks just taking shit out in the open. Just taking shits. And they have like no sewage. And I thought, man. So Superman made you think about what? this. And, and this made me think about <laughs> Superman. Like why not like, like he's the world's hero, right? Why wouldn't Superman do this shit? Yeah. Why not have Superman try and figure out this shit? Yeah. You know, go go the opposite direction with him. Why not build, like, a pipeline? Yeah. To, to like, one of these oceans? Because the world is, what, 60% water? Or, it's, I it's, it's, I 80? think it's actually 80%. It okay. might be over 80%. So why not build, like, these big filters or something yeah. to get water, you know? Why not take Superman and do what they did with Green Lantern in the 70s and Hard Traveling Heroes? Why not take that fucking and just turn it? Because no one's done it. Right. And if someone does it now... They owe me fucking royalties <laughs> because it's a fantastic and and I mean well, I'm really, getting a piece of that because this you know takes hey stuff. whatever man <laughs> whatever to take Superman back to what he was no I, I like I totally it, it agree. upsets me that when they did Superman Returns when it came to the line for you know he stands for truth justice in the American way it was truth justice and you know all that other stuff no man fuck all that other stuff that's don't that's bullshit. It's truth, justice, in the American way. I'm sorry. Baseball that is the and core Apple of Superman. You know, the basically Superman is the ultimate immigrant. Yeah. Let's, like, get back to the basics, man. And they're trying too hard to get back to the base. Like, oh, he's gonna, he's uh, this street guy, guy that's into MMA, and he's got this short haircut and a scruffy beard. Like, what the... How is Superman? Whatever, man. What are you doing? See, hearing stuff like this makes me, like, not miss... Um, I mean, when I when I read my books, like the titles that I do read, like even when I was, I stopped at a couple of comic stores last week when that Batman 40 came out, and I'm like, you know, breezing through it or whatever, and I started reading some of it. I, I like the feeling you get when you sit down and you read a book, but when you read the stories like this, it's just like, man, that's why I stick to my, you know, the, the stuff I stick to. Yeah, no, it's, it's I've been saying this like on, on message boards and, and in Facebook uh, groups I'm a part of that. It's getting to the point where, and people are like, dude, like someone said to me, if I had a nickel for every time you've bitched about how you're going to stop reading the big two, I'd be rich. And I was like, yeah, you wouldn't be rich, but you could probably buy a couple pops. You know? <laughs> but, and I yeah, that the, seems to be the thing with us. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, and the problem is, is like, as such a fan of things that I read when I was a kid and the 90s, and like specifically DC in the early 2000s, like DC was killing it, man. DC was killing it. In right, the crisis, let's... like they were doing, and so was Marvel. Yeah. They were doing really good books, and now it just went to like pandering, where everything is just like, oh, we've got to like create like a headline. And it's 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 become like, uh, who can get the, the, the biggest bang over like substance. Oh yeah, that's all it is. You know, it's like movies nowadays. They rely too much on overly CGIing stuff. And not enough on good story. And that's why half the movies should get suck. Oh my god, I gotta tell you about this. This has nothing to do with what's on my list. Which means some of this stuff we're probably gonna have to cover next week. Because we're already running about 20 minutes in. I was having a conversation with someone on Facebook about Winter Soldier. The movie? The movie. That's a great movie. And they said they hated Winter Soldier. Really? They said that Winter Soldier was a piece of crap. That they didn't waste... That they didn't give enough time to explaining who Bucky was. And why he became the Winter Soldier. And that they gave way too much time, and that it was like utterly boring and time wasting the amount of time they gave the Falcon. Okay, well, to answer your, let me just stop. Uh, you let me finish. Time. Okay. And that it was like a commercial. It was like a long commercial for toys, for jetpacks and Matrix, Matrix esque ships, and what? Okay, let let me break this down the way you explain it to this guy. First of all, they didn't give enough time to who Bucky was. You said that yeah. this guy said. They did that in the first movie. Yeah, right. Did you watch Captain America: The First Avenger? That was what that was. That's why you got Buck. That's why they didn't focus on Bucky and Winter Soldier because they focused on him in the first right, Captain that's America what I'm movie. Saying. Second of all, 
he did not choose to become the Winter Soldier. And they explained why they showed that. and how it happened. Exactly. It was in the Winter Soldier movie how that how that came about, going from Bucky to becoming the Winter Soldier. Third, I don't care. That was not a commercial to sell toys. Absolutely Because not. I do not own any of those toys besides the Legends, but those don't count because none of them came with rocket packs, I think. But, dude, no. That was just a damn right. good movie. And the way I, I, I sell it to people is that it was an action movie that just happened to star superheroes. It was not a superhero and movie. And the frightening thing about that movie is there's so many so many uh, just plot lines and story that's relevant to shit that's actually happening in the real world. Yes. yes. Like, that was the... When I saw that movie, like, I wasn't expecting to... I wasn't looking forward to it. I wasn't expecting to have the level of appreciation for Winter Soldier that I have. And, and I never thought I'd sit there and say, well, it's one of my top three... Uh, it's Marvel movies. In my opinion, it's their best. And they have not surpassed that yet. I would say... I, I'd put it at number two. I put Avengers 1 at first, Winter Soldier 2, and then Avengers Age of Ultron at three. And really? Guardians at four. Yeah, see, I would probably go Captain America, Iron Man, Guardians, Avengers. I see, actually like so Guardians many good, You know what? There's just, there's just so many... But there's so and, many hits. I think the weakest movie that they released was probably the first Thor movie. Really, Iron Man two. No, I liked Iron Man two. Really, Iron Man two is. The, I'm a big fan of those Thor movies. I don't like know Iron Man three like had them. a lot of action, but the story was. Yeah, see, I've even turned around in my hatred for Iron Man. I want to rewatch it though. Like, I, I almost picked it, it like up five the other day. Now that it's on cable. I almost picked I'm it like, up. Yeah, they have but, it on Blu-ray for like fifteen bucks. But I don't really comprehend how you could say like. Oh, they didn't give you, you know, enough to, like, like you said, Bucky was covered heavily. In the first Captain America. In the America. first Captain yeah. America. And then they showed you through flashbacks that Hydra found him, that Hydra op- operated on him and brainwashed him. And, like, did, and then secondly, and this buddy of mine made the point in the conversation that this movie, even though it's called Captain America Winter Soldier, isn't really the Winter Soldier movie. It's more Captain America versus Hydra and the Fall of Shield. You know, I thought that movie gave enough time to everybody. That I mean, it was Captain America's movie, but it wasn't solely focused on him. They focused on Winter Soldier. They focused on building Falcon. They focused on Shield and the destruction of it. Hence the crossover within the Agents of Shield television show. They focused a little bit more on Black Widow. You know, and the whole. Uh, they they put too much on Falcon. Well, you got to build the character somewhere. Why not build him there? Would you like Falcon to be built in the next Thor movie or in the, in the Spider Man movie? Yeah, right. Like, no, you've got to build him somewhere, and you don't want to build him in Avengers because in Avengers it's one of those things where it's just like, well, this is an Avengers movie. You spent time building up this, you know, B to C level character. Right. No, you do it where it fits most. And did he really get that much face time in? Winter I thought Soldier? it was good. Like, like I thought it was enough. It wasn't one of those scenes where I was like, "Oh dear God, it's Falcon again." I thought he was pretty. First yeah, of all, right? Anthony Mackie as an actor is pretty damn good. Yeah, absolutely. Second, the way he portrayed Falcon, I thought it was good. You know, he made me like Falcon on your left. You know, it's, yeah, I loved that. I loved that as a character that I have never given two two shits about. He again, it's it's like, uh, uh, oh my God, Molina. I forgot his first name. The guy that played. Dr. Octopus in the second Spider-Man movie. Sam Raimi. Alfred. Alfred Molina. That guy made me appreciate Dr. Octopus in a way that I never appreciated Dr. Octopus until I saw that movie. Yeah. And he did the same thing for me in Falcon. I didn't really care for Falcon. Just like how Age of Ultron made me appreciate Hawkeye. Yeah. I never really cared for the character of Hawkeye, but I really liked him in Age of Ultron. Probably one of the... the better points of Age of Ultron for me. You know, something that's been in the air now that we're on the subject of characters and Avengers and stuff like that. A Black Widow solo film. People argue Marvel needs it because there is no uh, dominant female superhero movie out there. Do you think Black Widow would be the one to hold that crown or the one that could start that trend? I feel like... Do you feel like people... The people who have invested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as fans will flock to go see a Black Widow movie. I feel like she deserves a movie. But at the same time, I feel like that her movie would almost have to be like... 
half shield mission, half how did we become Black Widow? I, I yeah yeah I would see it being a story similar to how they um, how they focused on Winter Soldier the movie mm-hmm. itself where it was a Captain America movie right but they divided so much. I think that it'd have to be something similar. Like, it's a Black Widow movie, but you have... It's not just Black Widow in it. You're going to have to have Hawkeye in it. Yeah. You know, you may even have Captain America in it. You know, just stuff like that. You, Of course, you have Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. in it. Yeah, absolutely. It, one of those things. There. And, I, and I feel like maybe that's why they threw some of that Black Widow stuff that we got in Age of Ultron in there to see if maybe there was actually an interest in seeing that further flushed out from people. Because she's putting in a lot of work. A lot. Now, I don't... As as a fan of the actress and the character, I don't think it would be fair for Marvel's first big female movie to be like, oh, let's go with something we haven't put on the screen before, a la Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. yeah. You no, know? it wouldn't be. Like, where she's sitting there busting her ass, you know, and she, you know, she doesn't get the solo movie. Yeah, no. But here's the thing. If the solo movie flops, it's going to hurt, and it's going to hurt bad. Yeah, but you know what, man? If they can manage to make Ant-Man a viable film... A tradition of me- What the hell was that, dude? We got sponsors we don't know about? No. I think I have windows open. Let me fix that. But, uh... Look at this guy. I feel like that if they can make, you know, things like Guardians of the Galaxy viable and Ant-Man viable, that if someone could sit down and write a smart script for her, and it doesn't have to be but almost a two-hour movie, you don't have to get too crazy with it, and you could flesh out Hawkeye, and hell, as a matter of fact... There are some other characters that could probably use some flushing out that they could throw in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, why not do like uh, throw a movie in there, give a give a mission with this new Avengers team before they, which I mean, it's ob- it's too late now because they're going right into Infinity War. I like the fact that at the end of Avengers: Age of Ultron, you see you know Widow and Cap, yeah, training. So why not have the Black Widow movie start from there? It's like they're focused, so so that way you still have Vision in the movie, you have. Scarlet, you have Falcon, but they play very minor, almost background roles, and it's from the perspective of Black Widow. No, I, go I, from there, you know, like I think start that would it from be brilliant. The, start it at from the end of Avengers. Why not? You know, I think that would be a that would be a great idea, man. That would be a great idea. So, with all this talk of Marvel Cinematic, you um, do you, do you think that we've got? Marvel vs. released the cast for Civil War. Do you think Civil War is going to tie into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which, by the way, got renewed for a third season? A lot of people seem surprised that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. got renewed for a third season. I feel like if you look at it, it's not really that surprising because Disney owns ABC. Here's my thing. A lot of people are still on the fence about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because it's not, you know, it's not Avengers. It's not Iron Man and Thor and all these characters showing up. But if you look at what they're doing... The storyline for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is building from the cinematic universe and towards the cinematic future in terms of now the Inhumans have already been introduced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So I think that's a good thing because now you don't have to have as much time flushing it out on the screen. You know what I mean? Like on the big screen, I should say. No, I I can see your point of view, but I think the problem is is that when Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. started out that they didn't really have like a firm idea of what they wanted it to be. That we know of. What if they did, but they couldn't really do anything because they're trying to tie things. Like, look at how Winter Soldier tied into well, the no, destruction of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, I it's feel a like, timing thing. I almost feel like that the Winter Soldier thing, that saved Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., in my opinion. Very true. I, and there, yeah, yeah. there are people that will disagree with that, but I feel like, man, I watched the first five or six episodes of that show, and I'm... Dude, I'm the type of person that will really give a show a chance. Like, Constantine, I, I, I wasn't exactly sold on it in the first couple episodes, but then it kicked in, and something clicked with me, and, you know, big fan. Yeah. Uh, Flash. Flash immediately loved Flash. Arrow. Dude, the whole first season of Arrow struggled to watch, but I made it all the way through it, because they gave me little things that there was endearing. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gave me absolutely nothing that was endearing about anyone. Except for Coulson. Mm -hmm. And having Coulson, who's supposed to be dead, who probably is slightly detrimental to fucking the Avengers, him not being dead. And this just goes back to what we talked about earlier with them, just people not staying dead in comic books. It lessens the meaning of death. 
so it kind of lessens like like his death brought the Avengers together so it kind of just for me lessens that a little bit and I don't really care for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. it just didn't do it for me and I hear constantly people are like oh man Agents what a great episode Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and they praise it over all these other comic book shows and I don't even watch it I think it's uh you notice that the Avengers still don't know that Coulson's alive yeah it's I, that's pretty funny well, that's one of the things that, you know, Josh Whedon came out and said that he, when he was making Age of Ultron, he was like, pretty much, F Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That show does not exist to me. <laughs> and I think he's pissed off because he wanted Coulson's death to mean something. And by them bringing him back and being on that show, it kind of takes away from it. And I, and the other thing, I think it was him not wanting to cater to the studios. He's like, I have my vision, this is, you know, which I can... I'm not a big fan of Joss, but I respect that shit. Now that we're on the subject of Joss Whedon, I don't care that he left Twitter, whatever, big whoop, you know. But did you hear about the whole Captain Marvel Spider-Man thing? About, he was pissed. He wanted to introduce Captain Marvel in Age of Ultron. Yeah. And he wanted to introduce Spider-Man in Age of Ultron to be a part of the new Avengers team that showed up at the end. But they said that they weren't sure on Captain Marvel. They were still working those kinks out. And Spider-Man was talking, you know, the, the Sony Marvel thing. So when he want, he approached them about that, they told him no. Because they weren't on the, you know, they were like, oh, no, nah, we don't know yet, blah, blah, blah. We kind of want to debut Captain Marvel on our own. You know, we want to make this, you know, separate event. So he said he finished rapping, and then they came to him and says, you know what? We got the green light for Captain Marvel. And uh, Spider-Man, go on ahead. I was like, I already finished my movie. You know? So he was. He said he was really pissed about that. But on the subject of Josh Whedon, do you know that guy wrote for Roseanne, the TV show? No. Because I've been watching Roseanne yeah. lately on Netflix, and um, like story by Ro- uh, Josh Whedon, you know, and he he was a producer, I believe, if not one of the writers on Toy Story. Really? Yeah. Josh Whedon's been around, man. Yeah. No. Definitely. He's definitely gotten around. I mean, not not including you know his more known works, you know, like Firefly and Serenity and you know, all that stuff. But Buffy. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. But I just mean, like, dude, Joss Whedon wrote Roseanne. Right, yeah, that, it is kind of odd, man. Dan! It is kind of odd. I'm actually surprised with the release of the, the cast on Civil War. No Spider-Man. That we know of. <clears throat> uh, well, they said he's so supposed far, to debut. It's, it's, they it's, said he's debuting in Civil War. Really? Um, yeah, that, that's that been 100% said by Marvel. He's debuting in Civil War. Because I've read conflicting things that said that Marvel's shelved him for Civil War and plans on just showing putting him in his own independent movie no nah, they said he's debuting in civil war now whether he has a big role or it's just like a small debut right. of peter parker you know but of course they're not going to announce that he's in the movie for sure because he hasn't been cast yet yeah you know but the question is not who is in civil war it's who's not in civil war true ozzy osbourne is not in civil war ozzy osbourne jim carrey is not in civil war the brady bunch mom is not in civil war Caesar from Planet of the Apes is not in Civil War. Basically, the two M&Ms, the yellow and the red one, they're on the commercials. They are not in Civil War. And Santa Claus is not in Civil War. My point being, everybody is in Civil War. You get right what I'm going okay, with No, I do. At first, I was like, they what the, at me like, at, dude. At first, I was like, what the hell did he smoke before he came here? <laughs> why didn't he share? Uh, no, I, I do get what you're saying. It's a Matt Civil Hardy Wars, is not in Civil War. Civil War is a stacked deck. It is. It really is. And I think Civil War is probably going to end up being something like Avengers 2.0 or Avengers Light. That's know? what a lot of people seem to think. And I'm kind of surprised that they decided to make it a Captain America movie instead of it just being Avengers. But I think part of that's because they're going to go Iron Man Light on it. Mm. Like, I really feel like they're going to do Civil War but they're going to focus on the Captain America side of it more than the Iron Man. Like, whereas the comic gave you 50-50. Yeah. With, uh... I I would say... I was going to say Spider-Man playing the in-between, but Spider-Man really wasn't as big a part of that book as people remember. If you go back and read the book. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, he's he's your point-of-view character for both sides because it goes back and forth. Yeah. But he's not really an integral piece of the Civil War puzzle. So, I mean, is it a good idea that they're just doing it as Captain America movie? Who knows? But I do feel like, you said, I feel like it's Avengers 3. Even though it's not called Avengers 3. 
And why not, like, why didn't they just call it Avengers 3? I do feel like it's going to end with the death of Captain America. A lot of people feel that way as well, and I, I honestly think that as well. Maybe not the death, or yeah, I'll say the death, but it's going to... Uh, um, At least I set think up this Captain is where, America 4. This is where Winter Soldier, a Bucky Barnes kind of steps up, yeah. I believe, you know? Well, I mean, we've all we, we've all known that as as fans of the comics, you've had to at least speculated that Bucky was going to be Captain America at some point in time. Because you look at the Hollywood business model, and at some point, you know, it's cost effective to replace these actors. What's a better way to replace the actor instead of firing Chris Evans and hiring someone new? Just do what the comics did and just replace the character with another character. Yeah. Which means we could, at some point down the road, see a Sam Wilson Captain America. God, if I hope not. Sam Wilson stays Captain America. Yeah, I've really found that unappealing. And just there's nothing for me that really. But you know, we'll talk more more Captain America Civil War as we get more um, details to it and get closer to it. Last piece: Agent Carter's returning. Agent Carter got a second season. Good. That's awesome. Love Agent Carter. I don't know what it was like. It's so people would be like, "You liked Agent Carter, but you hate Agent Sim." Yes, <laughs> I don't know why, but Haley Atwell all day. Those Agent Sim, fuck Agent. Ugh. Yeah, you there? You, you done yet? It's just not with that show at all. I've even thought about watching it on Netflix, but it's only got the first season, so I, I, I already know I'm not interested. It's just like, ugh. but uh, you got anything else to add there before we wrap up this week? Hugh Jackman has said Wolverine 3 will be his last go-round as the mutant. That's, you know, I mean, it's sad to hear, but I actually watched uh, Days of Future Past last night, and it's like, you just look at him playing a 70s version of himself, and then you look back to the first X-Men movie, and like, he's clearly older, and clearly bigger. And it's just like, you know, maybe it is just time. I love Hugh Jackman. I love the fact that he's embraced the character of Wolverine for as long as he did. I think he makes a great Wolverine. I remember when he was cast, people were like, what, why? He's too tall, blah, blah, blah. But he's owned that character, and he's made it. His. It's one of those characters now where it's just like, he's it, the same way we've discussed in the past over, okay, if Robert Downey leaves Iron Man, but you're still having an Iron Man with a, Robert Downey, or with a t- Tony Stark character, what actor do you replace him with? Yeah. Same with Chris Evans. Like, if you were going to keep the character, you know, if you were going to keep Steve Rogers, it's only you're changing the actor. Who do you do that with? So it's almost one of those things where it's just like, now you look at it with Wolverine as well. Like, well, who do you place him with? You know, like, I just, I can't see. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that wants their cast. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. But without that being there, it's almost like, dude, that Q Jackman is Wolverine and that's it. But maybe it's also a sign that once he leaves the franchise... It's like maybe it's time to shut the front. What, what do you? Where do you go from there? Because Wolverine is, argue, probably yeah, Hugh, Hugh Jackman is the star of the franchise. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, Wolverine is one of those. He is like the essential X Man. And know, that becomes of, the question: like the face. Now, Will Wolverine be an Apocalypse? Yeah. Well, does not Apocalypse come out before Wolverine three? No. 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 When does Wolverine three come out? Because uh, Apocalypse comes out next summer. Does it? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's next summer. Well, that's odd. I believe it's next, because it's Cause, already filming Because the article that I read about him leaving actually was like, oh, well, is he going to show up in Apocalypse? Yeah, I believe so maybe Apocalypse they're asking, is next is summer. Is he going to be in Apocalypse? Or, I don't know. Yeah, it is next summer, because it it's, it's filming now. Hmm. They've already showed like set um, set photos of uh, Jubilee and Jean Grey. Right, right. You know, So it's like, yeah, they're filming now. It'll be out next summer. Next summer's supposed to be a crazy year for movies, comic movies. Oh, yeah. Next summer's going to be a big test, I think. Because, what, there's like nine movies, six to nine movies slated for next well, year? The Batman, biggest, Superman, the, Wolverine. That's the biggest uh, question on the table for me. Is, 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 is the DC Cinematic U going to... No, no, no. I'm not looking off. at it that way. That's I'm looking at it as, okay, I'll stop the top of my head. You have uh, Batman, Superman next year. You've got X-Men next year. You've got, what, another two Marvel movies. You know, so that's four. Um, isn't there another uh, DC movie coming out towards the end of the year? No? Okay. Well, you still got Ninja Turtles coming out. That's still technically a comic book. Right. Regardless of how you look at it. You know, so that's five right there. I believe there's maybe one or two more. 
But when do the fans start to feel the superhero movie burnout? That's a question that can only be answered in time. And I believe if that happens, I, I truly believe it's going to be DC's fault. You really think so? Because Marvel pretty much has a lock on it. Everybody yeah, expects two, two Marvel movies a year. <coughs> it's, it's just the way it is. And they're soon going to three. But if you get the two to three Marvel movies and DC comes out of the gate, hey, we're throwing, because Marvel started slow, remember. And DC comes out of the gate two movies at a time, two movies at a time, and they suck. Yeah, but they're not. Well, yeah, they are. You've after got, the year after, in 2017. You've got Justice League and then maybe Wonder Woman. Yeah, big maybe. But I mean, Which it's actually, at this point, neither one of those films has started filming. Right. So how can you even speculate that we're getting those movies in 2017? Supposedly. When it's, that's not going to happen. I just, I, I think, you know, I, this is my prediction. So if this happens, you know, I'm awesome. I believe the fans at one point are going to get to a burnout where it's just like the numbers are starting going down. They just, they're not interested in this anymore, you know. But then Fox is going to relinquish the rights to the mutants and to the Fantastic Four. Marvel will get them back, and they'll be part of Marvel Phase, you know, 4, Phase 5, whatever, and then that, that'll that be the resurgence of the comic movies again, knowing that, oh, crap, Marvel finally has the X-Men and the Fantastic Four back, you know? Yeah, they did Avengers Infinity War already. Now what's next? And you do, like, this huge mega thing, you know? And like, well, that's what I was saying. When do we get to this point to where they've, like... The, the people know who all these characters are and we can just start doing cool stuff. Right. You know? I think, honestly, like, once all these characters are introduced, you know, even including the Netflix characters, dude, imagine them doing an Onslaught movie. Yeah, that would be crazy, dude. Oh, man, that'd be sick. Because that'd be a great mixture of using the mutants because it was because of Xavier Magneto. That'd be a great mixture of bringing in the Fantastic Four because of Franklin Richards creating mm-hmm. the Pocket Heroes Reborn universe. You know what I mean? Like, it was just... It, it would be great, you know. You use the Sentinels that Onslaught was controlling, and you got the Street Level. And imagine watching season four or whatever of Daredevil on Netflix, and he's you know doing what he's doing, but he's got to take down a couple of Sentinels as well. Like, dude, awesome! Yeah, totally. That that's got crossover. That's got mega bucks written all over yeah. it. Come on, crossover man. potential all over the board, man. Well, that wraps uh, episode forty nine, breaking the fourth wall. Word. As always, you can check out everything we do at Comics Remix, which should be getting an upgrade in the near future. Very near future. Uh, check out our Facebook page. Twitter. Twitter. Uh, Spin Rack, Comics Remix. We're on Instagram as well. Instagrizzle. Alex Renz, uh, Alex Renz, uh, check out Reviews Remix for some toys. Word. And join us back here next week for questions. episode 50. Questions, comments, concerns, email us individually. Brian at comicsremix.com. Junior at comicsremix.com. Or Alex at comicsremix.com. Um, still working on getting those guests. Uh, waiting to hear some responses. Hopefully soon. Um, yeah. I would have liked, because next episode will be our big 50. Yeah. I would have liked to have that main one that we're waiting to get back on us. Uh, as a nice... You know, hey, it's number fifty. Look it's like, hey, episode got. fifty. Guess what? We announcements. Woo! Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You know, maybe, maybe fifty-one. Maybe or fifty-two. <laughs> the new fifty-two. The, the poo fifty-two. Yeah. We'll see what happens, man. I mean, there's only so much we can do. Right. Wishful think. Fingers crossed. Please. See you back next week.